Hello, and welcome to this installment of the Station Hill Intermedia Lab. Tonight, Sam Truett will be performing a piece that is a piece, or will turn to pieces of one throughout. We encourage those of you away from us to participate with this live feed by contributing a line or lines at any point over the next hour. To do so, please go to the comment box to the right of the live stream and type out your line. Then to send it, just click the little paper airplane. It turns blue and will fly its way right to us. So please contribute and enjoy. So here goes nothing, beginning here, beginning and ending, the beginning of the end, and coming to the end of the beginning. And don't we get tired of always starting and stopping, beginning and ending, and really isn't it the middle that we want. And to get there, we have to learn to count past three. The uh, German poet Heinrich Heine, he, he said of the dog chasing its tail, that objectively he's being eaten. No. Objectively, he is evil, and subjectively, he is evil. And that includes the scram. And that includes the screaming mood. And that includes us as we work along the scratched gravel. And we look among the scatter and the scene and the schlock and the schlep to that which is starting here. From here, which is scratch, scratch, the word scratch. What we'd like you to do, for those of you looking into the space, is to go to that bar to the right of what you see and write a line that includes this word, scratch at your earliest, middle, or latest opportunity within the next hour, which then we can sing back to you from the beginning to where we are, which is, what do we call you? We've had in mind for some time certain questions, certain propositions, certain places, certain thoughts since the early 70s, full of feeling and yearning, questions we've had in mind for some time. What would it be like to step inside a home? What would you be like there? What would be the nature of sound there? What action could one take? I think of what it means to be coming away from 
faces and interfaces and the comitata and collaborative forms and what is possible when we move beyond the redundancy? What is happening when we think of a place of this nature? And more, three questions. What would it be like to step inside a poem? What new surfaces for poetry could we uncover? What would it be like to be in a place in which everything fits like the walls of an Irish pub? What would it be like to be inside what is action within the society, the association for the adva advancement of creative musicians? What would it be like to be in the mind and enterprise and action of Harry Smith? What would it be like to be in 1957? Duchamp. What would it be to be in the Comitata the yearning and feeling that we all knew and that Alison Knowles 15 some years ago said doesn't exist now. The mix, the new surfaces for poetry, Chicago coming out of New York, the yearning and the feeling and the Cedar Tavern and Duchamp avoiding pollen. What would it be like to write that word in this place, in this dream house, as we imagine Lamont Young? What would we call it? Would we call it Hararite? What would we call the a rising of Sun Ra before an archipelago of contexts to make nothing happen. And is this this place, this state is, is this what Michael Ruby and I thought of as we mulled what to call this repeatedly? Poetics Lab, Poetics Research Bureau, like the one in LA, Poetic Action Network, but then anything with poetry is redundant because poetry is to make and it is the signature in which we all find our names. I had so many rules, so many freedoms, so much of what we left behind. We had such feeling and yearning. There must have been music in the caves of Altamira, of Lascaux. And where are we now? In the mind and enterprise of Harry Smith walking away from the Cedar Tavern. All of this from the early 90s in New York. Right word, we had in mind for some time. What would it be like to step inside a home, like the walls of an Irish pub, to mix with faces and interfaces, happenings, events, actions, Fluxus, archipelago of contexts to make nothing happen. I wrote down some things when this was all sort of early on. I wrote, we want to press on the chords of the sore intervals between discrete disciplines to speak out or sign out or become themselves 
an interval to a higher threshold to see what speaking and image can do. And even with intervals of music, song, like the movies, and even film sometimes, or TV shows. But what about a continuousness of sound feel and of speech and of image? Should that it become it and inhabit it, the seat of the sixth sense that is the invisible, imperceptible shadow of an unreal sun inside us. The question always, how can we get there from here? Touch and smell, lose touch. Visual and auditory, taste, vision, green screen, one with Mr. Surround, two background, shadow show, Bali, to compass the reality of work of what arrives to us through eyes, form, shape, color, movement, boundaries, pattern, the visible shape, appearance, collision, closest to missing sense of touch, the shape of the ear, the shape of the ear, amp, speakers, mic, stereo, two, not one, faced, broken, a field, and whatever can happen, appear, there, vibration, in the form of music, or more or less, the break, the breach, the grace, the hull, the shape of the ship of enterprise as it holds the sides and is the waves it rides toward what is word the needle northern japanese sense that holds the craft together moving inside it deck hands and particularly around the engine cornered and covered in bites and trailing in what path of what sun is left to name itself is, is, is as the bin, bin, birth of its birth in spurts or pool on an invisible floor, sound or shout that may touch as at some point you come through the viewfinder in your apparent door eyeball to eyeball with your neighbor and I not to panic but smooth step back and pretend it never happened and will never again you look eyeball to eyeball against mixing and matching weave some story around us too I had so many rules, sound, sound, collaboration, continuous, unified, feel, one hour, three faces, duration, so that mistakes could happen, dis, not attract, archipelago, context to make nothing happen, to envision a world in which these lighthouses may illuminate a pattern that we may become.
And I think of Harry Smith going into the barrios, going into juke joints, crossing deserts, collecting film, collecting sets, laying the ground for all of this, anticipating all for us to be again here, where nothing rhymes, where what can be said is to step into a context in which everything fits like the walls of an Irish pub, in which we are eyeball to eyeball, word against word, each word touching. Moving on. Jackson McClose said, the subject of the poem is the reader's mind. Intermedia, inter, between, media, between, middle, I wrote. Medium, mid proto-Indo-European, in the middle of things between us, mixed, media as intervening substance, media through which a force is, through which a force or quality is conveyed, and then inhabit that for as long as you are able in words or other midhyo, midhyo, in place of media as other, in place of media, in place of communication, media as a substance through which a force or quality is conveyed, and then inhabit that for as long as you are able in words or other mid yo mid yo me proto indo european measure metos the first wife of zeus goddess of cunning med med to take appropriate measures Higgins, from who derived this uh, intermedia. It's so plausible, you know, as we're fetching around for Benji Lama. We come to Higgins, who lived uh, in the neighborhood in Barrytown, where Station Hill is located. He wrote, Intermedia, an uncharted land that lives between collage music and the theater is not governed by rules. Each work determines its own medium and form according to its needs. And then he later
in 81 wrote in intermedia the visual element painting is fused conceptually with the words which is the one reader this fold and to find that hinge and to open those doors intermedia has always been a possibility since the most ancient times. Someone, somewhere, is always trying to do something which adds to the possibilities for everybody. And that, that large, Everybody will someday follow this somebody and use whatever innovations were made as part of their workaday craft. Reminiscent of Gertrude Stein, composition is explanation. No work has ever, no, no work has ever, was ever, no work was ever be good because of its intermediality. It always, it allows for all ingress, a work which otherwise seems opaque and impenetrable, but once that ingress has been made, it is no longer useful to harp upon the intermediality of a work. Oh, intermediality is today as it was lies useful, appropriate, what that I cannot read further is interesting. Lies between. And then Higgins postulates that he derived this term intermedia from Coleridge and from a letter that Coleridge wrote in uh, 1812 but a guy named Benjamin Zimmer, you know, did the forensics on this and couldn't find it. Um, you know, which is interesting because it sort of, it um, underlies my thought, which is that Diggins, Higgins uh, made it up, or you know, thought it up and then circled back and gave it to Coleridge. But Coleridge in his Biographia Literaria, he writes interestingly, general law of association, condition under which all exciting causes act, in which they may be generalized according to Aristotle, ideas by having been together acquire a power of recalling each other. Partial representation awakes the total representation. Practical determination of this common principle to particular recollections. Five agents or occasioning causes. First, connection in time, whether simultaneous, preceding, or successive. Two, 
vicinity, or connection in space. Three, interdependence or necessary connection as cause and effect. Four, likeness. Five, contrast. Chasms in the continuity of rep reproduction that movements or ideas possess one or the other of these five characters of reproduction, movements or ideas possessing one or the other of these five characters that pass through the mind as links, recall other parts with which they had not, had coexisted, though not vivid enough to excite that degree of attention, which is requisite for distinct recollection after consciousness. And then he goes on, a small water insect on the surface of rivulets, which throws a sink that is five, spotted shadow fringed with prismatic colors on the sunny bottom of the brook. How the little animal wins its way up against the stream by pulses of active and passive motion, now resisting the current, now yielding to it, in order to gain strength and a momentary fulcrum for a further propulsion. No unapt emblem of the mind's self-experience in the act of thinking. Two powers at work relatively to each other are active and passive, not possible without an intermediate faculty, which is at once both active and passive. We must denominate this intermediate faculty in all its degrees and determinations the imagination. And then reflecting on Wordsworth's uh, low and rustic language, he writes, I deduce the position from which the causes elsewhere assigned, which render meter the proper form of poetry and poetry imperfect and defective without meter. Whatever else is combined with meter must, though it be not itself essentially poetic, have nevertheless some property in common with poetry as an intermedium of affinity, a sort of mordant, um, which is a common base, um, like or in sound, a, a trilling, rapid pattern between notes above and below a note, between it and the super added meter. How poetry, Mr. Wordsworth truly affirms, does always imply passion. Which word? must be understood in its most general sense as, a, as an excited state of the feelings and faculties. And then the Cuban poet, Omar Perez, he said in one of those lighthouses, one of those places in the archipelago of places, like where we are, called Poet's House. He, he, 
poetry came before language. to the view of this place, I, as I noted, had a lot of ideas. I had this idea of three positions. I had the idea of the visual feel. I had the idea that there should be words that not only a visual taste, but also that there was music in those caves. And then words, with these three things. And I thought that words came first, and I thought for this Station Hill, Intermedia, Lab, that the poet would have words, and that the poet would have something that was unified and an hour long. I thought that the poet would find a visual artist, a person who made films, a person who worked with sight, would find this person to collaborate with. And then there must have also been as we said, music that you would find a composer and somebody who would do a sound feel. And I was very fixed on this, on this sense of the three things coming together. And I was interested in the poet not knowing what the visual artist was doing and wouldn't know really what the musical music was or the sound field, but there would be some understanding of some theme, some organizing idea, and that they would come together and there would be misalignments, that there would be the possibility of mistakes. But I realized that Higgins, in talking about intermedia, he's talking about sculpture. You know, you can lay out your pick. He's talking about painting, theater, poetry, film, these different practices. And that there was this sort of the coming together of this sense of the five somehow into what is the guts of what was Fluxus which he sought to articulate in this term, intermedia. But I misconstrued that, and really I thought more also in terms of this five, that they were like the, uh, the five senses, that we have these, these five senses, versus like the idea of sort of different disciplines 
and that the five senses bodily, as we are between them, as in that Proto-Indo-European man, this wobbling, as to step inside the poem as a body, or step inside the body as a poem, unbound in a collaboration of senses. And then, you know, what are the rules of such a collaboration? Is an implausible and perhaps even ridiculous thought, unless the rule is to mix them up. That Higgins, in his approach, is speaking of the shattering, in a sort of, you know, glorious sense, the shattering of conceptual domains, these discrete disciplines, and to find the hinges between them. Can that be applied to this approach toward a kind of synesthesia in which we're able to hear colors and have all our senses scrambled as Rimbaud posited, born in Charlieville. Or, you know, is there that sense of what Coleridge pointed toward, of representation, of association, of the five elements of time, duration, spatial, cause and effect, likeness and contrast, would do just as well? Or is it the sound field and words and vision and motion in chance coming together? Another way of speaking of this third section is I can't get my mind around you. I can't get my mind around you. But maybe if we leave the mind alone, maybe if we leave ourselves in a state of not knowing what the left and right, that the left hand does not know what the right hand is doing, and that we are as these water striders, and to move in that flow. move in that flow. To move in this space. To move in this light house. And to approach that which is nothing is true. All is permitted. Nothing is true. All is permitted. Nothing is true. All is permitted.
Moving on. What is lab? Labore, as in work, as in burden. What can we do? What can we do at this hinge between meat illusion and code illusion? And what, and toward what? I think of Viktor Klebnikov, the Russian Futurist, supremist, Zhao, who said, you can say anything in prose, so poetry should be reserved for saying nothing. That poetry is, as poetry does, make nothing happen, which is a pun. Once a pun, always a pun. Everything I say is a lie. is invisible, and it is the invisible that we must try to communicate. I mean, how can words operate? How, and also how the human and machine flickering us, collaboration has already arrived. And one may only dance to the render of the rhythm of waves, love, one mouth. I want to read from this translation of some of Rene Dumas' writings around his study of Hindu poetics. Dumas, born 1885 in Charlie Bell. And he writes, one does not know the word by the medium of words, but by silence. And then, from his essay entitled To Approach the Hindu Poetic Art 
in the section entitled The Origin of Art, the gods, it is said, now this is in the passage from the Devapara Yuga to the Kali Yuga, in which we are now moving from a state of what Dumal called internal research to, I guess, in our yuga, the external one. And he writes, the gods, it is said, distressed by the ensuing disorder, prayed to Brahman to produce a new Veda, a fifth destined for all the castes. And from the substance of the four Vedas, he who see things as they are created the dramatic art. The theater was to be an, quote, analogy of the movement of the world, a condensed expression of the three worlds, the universal laws, and the four motives in human conduct, which include material, prosperity, uh, dhamma, desire, passion, uh, dharma, mukta, the four motives of human conduct. And then, all human types, all castes, all professions were to envision themselves within this system. It's kind of a mixed bag. Um, thus each man could experience the profound pleasure of seeing him or herself, yeah, or us, you know, represented comprehended, placed in the total movement of the universe. Each person, fool, or wise person, coward, or hero, serf, or lord, would see the justification for their existence in the harmony of the worlds, and through the door of individual emotion, enter the sacred teachings. Um, but as it turns out, this, this first performance, um, this first articulation of this dramatic art was, an, uh, was the depiction of the struggle and the ultimate victory of the divas over the asuras. And uh, in this first performance, it ended in a riot uh, because members of the Divan and Asuran for you know were in the audience, so that this this riot became a battle and spilled over into this first instance of this new Veda, even to the extent that that Brahma needed to intervene and entered the lighthouse, entered that space, and said, ah, it's good that you're fighting, and indeed your conflict, your war, is what holds the universe together, holds the harmony of the universe together, and indeed is what holds the dramatic arts together. So next time you see your next war film or any of these things, it's all like baked into this uh, primordial model. And then Dumal goes on to say, art through emotion seeks to animate the entire being. And it is not enough to say that art represents the universe. 
In fact, art remakes it. It recreates from it an analogy. Two directly related principles are at the foundation of the aesthetic. The one, analogous recreation of the universe is particularly apparent in the plastic arts. The other, the establishment of an emotional concord between the individual and the universal laws manifests itself in music, dance, and poetry. The first is expressed through the concept of pramana, right proportion, analogic precision, conformity to the ideal model, which, by the way, does not include, has little to do with beauty or the 1.67 to 1 ratio but has to do with aligning with pranama. And this is manifest through architecture, sculpture, and painting. And the second is expressed in poetry through the concept of rasa, or savor, direct apprehension of the state of being. Moving on.
Jack Spicer is calling this phonemics. Scratch phonemics. No love deserves the death it has. Night sound to scratch and die. An archipelago, rocks cropping out of ocean. There's a reason for everything, and no reason for everything to scratch. Yielded nothing, the bloody cat scratched her face. Seabirds shit on it, live out their lives on it. Scratch that interface through the silence that means resistance. Or is it once a mountain? The itch scratches cycle. Did Lemuria, Atlantis, Moon ever exist except in the minds of old men fevered by the distances and the rocks they saw? To scratch at the end of someone somewhere, ancient rhymes, one ball in the corner pocket. Was it true? Can the ocean of time claim to own us now adrift over that land, in that land? Lunch now, the bison scratch food out of the prairie. If memory serves there, that right out there is more to it. No such thing as eye to eye. Harry Smith is the film, is the groundwork. If you don't come up with scratch, you're gonna have to sell it. Wake up one more morning. See the sea in the distance die fairly. Water. Because mainly, it is not land, it is not here, it is not us. Scratch the third face, if you don't come up, you're gonna have to sell it. Have gone back where they came from, there may be a whale in this ocean. There's a reason for everything, and no reason for anything. Empty fragments, like the shards of pots found in some Mesopotamian expedition. Gone, grown, and gash to mash a scratch on the pad. They're like the shards of pots found but not put together. The unstable universe has distance but not much else. The bloody cat scratched her face to the mirror as she uttered her own name in the dark. The unstable universe has distance, but not much else. No one's weather or room to breathe in.